Well, hello. Is that where, this, is that where we're going? Yes, we are going, ladies and no, gentlemen. I mean, I mean, going crazy. <laughs> I've already going. been, my darlings. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the latest installment of Poetic License. Da, 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 poet. I, I have to show off my sign from when I did it at a bookstore, right? You know? Anywho, um, I hope everyone is doing well, groovy, cool, and everything. I, It's great to see everyone. And I and I can hear tennis going on upstairs, so I've got this and... And and uh, Tom's just laughing at me, but I'll put it behind my head because I'm not watching tennis right now, so I'll do that. But I will point out that I've got a Chicago Reader shirt on, and I only say that for Tom, local to Austin, because you know the Chronicle, the free weekly paper that's around in Austin. In Chicago is the Chicago Reader, and right now I just went back to visit, and it's every other week, but the, the Pride issue just came out, and I'm like, I'm going to have a Chicago Reader shirt when I come back. And so that was my stupid little goofy reference to a Chicago reference, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And while I was traveling, not only did I read a bunch of submissions, and I will um, share material from new magazine issues, but I also wrote poetry, including a poem about Ukraine and a bunch of poems written after the uh, Roe v. Wade decision was overturned. So I'm going to combine that instead of just reading things from magazines for all these readings for you guys before I start up and I should look at my list just to make sure I have it. My current list so far says Zoom host John F. McMullen, Therese, Susan, Tom, Dan Weinberg, hello, um, Stephen, and I'm looking for Stephen. Where did Stephen go? Is, did Stephen leave? Did Stephen leave him? And Michael Sindler. I don't see a Stephen. Does he leave? He may have. He was here. Well, he, he always has a place in our hearts. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and uh, and I, I heard that Kathleen Schanelmeyer said that she was planning on coming, so there might be a Kathleen coming to a Zoom meeting. I don't know. I'm just letting my Zoom hosts know that. Um, but I just thought I'd give that list out to you guys before I start reading poems. And the first one I'm going to read is a poem, one, from the current issue of CCD Magazine, which is the July 2022 issue. Go into four sets. Oh my gosh. They were, uh, jo Djokovic won two sets and, and Reithoven no. just won... No, one, they're one and one. Oh, there, you mean, oh, so it's going to be four sets. Reithoven actually won, sorry, nobody cares. No, uh, Noah Djokovic, oh, I mean, I mean, Noah Djokovic is like one of the best tennis players probably of all time and he's playing right now at Wimbledon. By the way, I have to do more sports stuff. Normally, the Sunday between, which is today, is an off day and normally there'd be no tennis. But they just said, nope, we're going to run through because oftentimes there is rain delays and stuff and it ends up running late. So they're actually playing right now, the last match of the day. And Djokovic is playing and a Dutchman, Janet Kuypers, I'm half Dutch, uh, Reithoven is playing. And he's a walk-on. He is a walk-on. He was chosen and there hasn't been a walk-on to make quarterfinals. I'm yelling this for John since uh, Kudla in 2015, which is just crazy. I mean, this the walk-on is playing, and they're gonna play at least four sets to do it. Now I'm done. I'm done. My tennis thing is behind my back. I'm done talking about tennis. Sorry, everybody. I apologize. And hello, everyone, to a Facebook world. Since I'm live streaming this, I should talk. This is one poem that I'm going to share with you from the July 2022, Volume 323 issue of CC and Day magazine that is titled Heart of the House. Um, this is actually like a really, really old log cabin that was brought into Skokie, Illinois, that they are using for their museum, for their art museum or so. It's a, it's a really well known. I, I didn't realize I just thought it looked kind of cool. And uh, so, anyway, I was going to share with you one poem that appears in that book and it is actually from the performance arts section this magazine has different sections this is one poem that is from the performance arts section that was actually from a show that I did there in March uh, one poem that I read there called quieting and the chamber and the future host of the open mic there was like that's just amazing that story that you told and and actually commented on it so i hope you guys like it i don't have sound effects in the background this is called quieting anechoic chamber once on the job i had to go into an anechoic chamber to remove a piece of machinery you see this room had machinery that would test if something could and would survive in space they would make this entire room shake violently to see if anything inside, everything inside stayed together. 
When that room shakes so violently, th there's a ton of noise. So they created this anechoic chamber there. And this room had all these devices and slits and shock absorbers inside of it so that all of the noise just disappeared. This room had no sound. I mean, no sound at all. And I had to go in and measure a piece of equipment once. The work should take about 10 minutes. I didn't know what losing one sense instantly would do. Would you feel lost or, or panicked? With quieted footfalls, I worked in complete silence until I heard my blood coursing through my veins. After just a few minutes, without sound, I, I, I mean almost, no sound at all. I had to get out. That's that piece. <laughs> so it, it works when you've got music, and I had music. Thank you, you guys. I, I, uh, oh, Dan, I don't know if you were at the show in March um, at uh, Gallery Cabaret, because I read that one there. I don't know if you did. No matter. You don't have to worry about it. But he came to my show when I was just there doing women's oh. issues poetry. But anywho. Anyway, don't worry about it, because I'm going to read new stuff now. I'm, d I'm done with relying, relying on magazines. This first one I wrote about the Ukraine while I was driving, and it's called Ukraine Rights, Freedom, and Peace. It doesn't matter if the Cold War is over. The U.S. will always turn a cold shoulder to one leader who wants everyone to be equal. <laughs> Translation, drop people down to the lowest common denominator and ask all to be happy about their lower caste. So in 86, after Ukraine's Chernobyl meltdown, still in the Soviet Union, no shorthand for USSR, globally we saw damage throughout Europe and only later learned of their shoddy efforts to keep this nuclear reactor running so they could flex strength and superiority over the U.S., Still taking years for Ukraine to break free. Their job was then to monitor the monster that once rained nuclear ash the size of silver dollars down on townspeople. And they did well, but the people hated their leader and voted a comedian to rule. A literal stand-up comic was voted into power. And this may have been the point when Putin thought they could bring Russia's forces in so he could take more of Mother Russia's land back. The world didn't expect this once comedian, now leader Zelensky, to do more than crumble under the pressure. But he got rid of the business suit and got in the trenches with his fellow men, live streaming the post-battle damage. This is how countries saved themselves at their inception, and not with bureaucracy, but fighting tooth and nail for their rights. It may be bloody, it may seem hopeless, but when you know it's right, <laughs> you know you have no choice. People around the world rally their support, send weapons, allow refugees, and some too far away to make a difference only show symbols of their support. Facebook profile pics become adorned with the Ukraine flag. Maybe it's because we abhor those pinko commies, but maybe it's fundamentally because we know a bully when we see one, and we all, deep town, support what's right. Thank you. Everybody, for people live streaming and stuff, you don't see people are clapping. And thank you. And by the way, Lorna, hello. I see you and I will add you to the list. Hello. Um, I have one more poem. And yes, I was kind of going nuts at some point writing stuff while reading submissions in a car um, about this stuff after the Roe v. Wade turnover. And this is one that I'm sharing with you for it. And this one is called Unborn Fetus Does Not Equal Human Life. Hurricanes, typhoons from the opposite sex, has been, has been raining over women's shores. Violent winds tearing what we know apart, leaving only bits and pieces of what we need, reminding us every moment of what we've lost. I, I've heard that if you say nothing as pieces of your life are taken from you, then they'll take and take until there's nothing left for you and there's nothing left of you. 
for when you're on death's door, no one will save you, not even yourself. Is this the apocalypse? Did you see the four horsemen? What are the revelations after they've stripped you of your female rights, which really are human rights? Hopelessness and rage get you nowhere when the opposite sex defines what you can do with your body, when they pass laws that allow people to even sue people that help you to exercise your rights. <laughs> when these fools who restrict your rights say, what about the child? <laughs> they forget that life begins at birth. It says so in Genesis for Adam. He only came to life after God breathed air into him. Even in Exodus 21 and 22, if a woman has a miscarriage, there is only a fine. But if a woman dies in labor, the man is put to death. <laughs> so, apparently, they didn't think of an unborn fetus as a human life in your precious Bible. So, I shouldn't have to act like a woman, raising my voice, asking, pretty, please, can you not take our rights away? Your religion, which isn't globally accepted, which is not what this country is based on, isn't the First Amendment about freedom of religion, which entails freedom from religion? Your religion, which doesn't support your theory, is not the rule for half the people. This is supposed to be a free country, but after all their storms have ravaged your shores, they... Now hammer in these invisible bars driven deep into the ground, now pressing against your limbs as you eternally struggle to break free. But remember, you are not alone. Half the world and more is on your side. So to protect the lives now living, each and every one of us will fight until our dying breath. Thank you. Before, because I'm going to make this talking more about women's issues stuff, and before I ask Zoom host John F. McMullen, I'm going to read to you a couple of news articles that I just heard this weekend uh, from a news article from yesterday. And uh, by the way, I should say hi to Sterling that's watching the Facebook live feed and everybody else out there. Um, from yesterday, July 2nd, there was a story that a 10 year old rape victim was pregnant and asked a court to authorize an abortion while the judge urged her to stay pregnant. And she was actually under a, cubicle, or a crucifix in the courtroom in southern Brazil, where the judge then asked her, do you want to name the baby? I mean, this judge even had ordered the girl to be taken away from her family to protect the fetus, the judge said. The procedure is legal in Brazil, but even in cases of rape, but it's still really, really shunned upon. And yeah, yeah, that's another country. But uh, from an article on the first, a couple of days ago, um, as Ohio restricts abortions, the Buckeye State has outlawed any abortion after six weeks. Now, a child abuse doctor had a 10-week, a 10-year-old patient, oh, a 10-year-old patient that was in the office who was six weeks and three days pregnant. So they're contacting doctors in Indiana to help them to help this abused 10-year-old girl. It said in the article that an obstetrician, a gynecologist, even had seen, quote, an insane amount of requests from pregnant people in Kentucky and Iowa. <laughs> I mean, after the review a decision, I hear that the French prime minister was um, backing enshrining abortion rights in their constitution. Israel even loosened their abortion law restrictions. Israel. Israel even loosened their, their abortion restrictions after Roe v. Wade was I was just like, that's just insane. And I don't know how many people are going to talk about it, but I just needed a rant on that, and I'll probably have more poems on that. And I will be adding Lorna to the list. Thank you very much. But now, um, I, I, would, I would, yeah, we'll do rounds of three. That sounds reasonable with our group. And I hope that our Zoom host, Mr. John F. McMullen, would be able to take it away. Are you ready, my darling? No, I'm not going to say my darling anymore because I keep saying the same phrases. So I'm going to say something from a movie. I'm going to say, John, you are so very. That's going to be my thing that I'm going to say throughout this. I'm going to say, everybody is so very. So, John, because you are so very, I look forward to hearing your poems. Are you ready? Okay, I'm, Perfect. I am, and I'm going to make one comment on the news since you did. 
Modric held the green today, supposedly said that we should pull out of NATO and we should pull all the funding from Ukraine. So that's... What? That's, that's <sighs> Good times, right? This is from the latest <laughs> uh, CCND. <laughs> da 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 da